Hey, how's it going, everybody? It's your pal, Impossible. I'm here. Uh, today we're playing some Trail Makers. I'm going to go over a little guide here, show you guys how the logic block works and uh, how these different sensor blocks can uh, feed into the logic blocks and get things done. So I figured first we're going to go over the uh, sensor blocks here, go over each one. I built a little contraption using each one of these blocks to give you guys a very clear idea of how exactly they operate. So uh, starting off, we're going to go with the angle sensor right here. I have a vehicle built that shows off the angle sensor and how it's going to be working. Let me see if I can uh, put this in a better place here. I think we're going to want something like that. All right, let's hop into our little creation here. And uh, this is the angle uh, sensor right here that I'm looking at with the little white arrow pointing up. And uh, actually, let's go into the options. I think that'd be easier for you guys to understand what's going on here. So uh, first off, it has a direction. Where do you want it to... Uh, to, to be activated. So right here you can change this direction right here. This will change where that little blue area right here is. So we move this around and hit enter or something. Now it's over here. I hit it and move it around again. Now it's over here. And I want it to be somewhere around negative uh, 45 actually is where, where I wanted it. There we go. And the width is uh, very much the same thing. You change the width and it changes how big this blue area is. So I move it up like that. It gets much bigger. Move it like here, it gets much smaller. That's just how that goes. And uh, basically the output is what do you want it to do if the condition is true? And uh, basically, you know, if true, output one. So it's basically like a true false kind of thing. Except for in this case, you can have it do nothing. You can output, you know, true or output a, a negative here. So that, that's the difference here. Right now we're gonna leave it at one. And uh, you can also reverse it to where it'll always be triggered as long as it's not within this area. So I'll show you guys that in a moment. But for right now, let's actually go into the vehicle here. Get build so we can hop into it. I think, are we actually in it? We're in it now. There we go. So right now you can see nothing is triggered. We're not, we're not triggering the thing. But look what happens when I do this. Now the lights are triggered because the white arrow is being pressed into that blue space. And you see the arrow actually turns green because it's in that area. And that is basically how the angle sensor works. It is really that simple. So let's go in here real quick. And I'll show you how the other trigger works. Let me flip this around. Now we'll have it trigger anytime it's not within that area. So it basically makes it work exactly opposite. So now, as you can see, the lights are on because we're not within that blue area. And when we go into the blue area, now they're shut off. Triggered because it's outside. No longer triggered because it's inside. That is it. That is the angle sensor block. And hopefully, I, I tried to make this as straightforward as possible. Hopefully, you guys have a good understanding of how the angle sensor works. And you can implement it in your own builds. So next coming up is the altitude sensor. So basically, you know, you, you can have something set off if you go out at a single, you know, at a set distance. So let's say, okay, I want this to happen when I'm at 10 meters. Well, we can do that. Let's see, I think it's this one here, hopefully. I don't remember all my builds very well. I did this a while ago. All right, so we're in our little thing here. It says this block right now is at 14 meters. It's uh, not perfectly at sea level, so we're a little bit higher. But when I hit space, I think, there we go. Oh my God, it zoomed too high. You gonna trigger it? Oh, 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 we didn't quite trigger it. We're not quite high enough. Okay, let me go into build mode here. I can, I can play with it here. It's not the end of the world. Let's go in here. And I want you to trigger. It should have triggered at 18. It must have been very short. Anyway, let's just put it at uh, 15 meters. That way we know it's going to trigger. Okay, let's go back in here. All right, so now you see it's at 14 meters. It's not triggered. I'm going to hit space, which is going to bring these pistons up. It's at 15. It triggers. And, of course, it's above 15. So as long as it's above 15, it keeps triggering. I go back down. And there we go. It's no longer triggered because we're below 15. That is all there is to that one. I'll go into the options really quick. So let's see here. Into these options for the altimeter. And uh, this is basically you can set the altitude. Where do you want it to get set off? I initially had it at 18, which is a little bit too high. We brought it down to 15. It worked. But let's say we want it to trigger anywhere uh, below 15. So we have it set to 15 here. I'm going to hit it to trigger below. Let's go into build and see how that changes things. Now we see it's below 15 and it's triggered. And when I have it go up, it shuts off. Why? Well, it's above 15. That's just how that works. That is how the altimeter block works. It's really just that simple. 
All right, so hopefully you guys have a good idea of how that block works now. You know, get rid of this one. We'll move right on to the next one here. Next one is the speed sensor. This one's a little bit more interesting. has a little tiny bit more nuance to it. So uh, this is a little vehicle I made to show it off. Let's uh, look at this block here really quick. I'm going to click on this one. Hold on. Can I click on you, please? There we go. And uh, you can see you have a speedometer. When do you want things to be triggered? At what speed? You want to trigger it below. In other words, right now, things will only be triggered if you're at or above 70 kilometers per hour. But if you hit this, it'll be triggered until you hit that speed. So it's just basically what, what kind of behavior you're looking for. This block, you have to be careful, though, because it points the direction it has to be going. In other words, if you're not going 70 miles an hour in that direction, it's not going to trigger. So I'm going to show you guys that really quick. Let's go in the build here. And you guys can see my thing's going forwards. It's set to uh, turn these lights on in the back as soon as we get 70. So let's go ahead and do that. Oh, we're over 70. The light's triggered. We're under. It stopped. Let's go backwards. And you notice it doesn't work when we're going backwards. We're going backwards 90 miles per hour. It does not work. Because it only goes in the direction that it is facing. It has that little arrow there. You can also tell by the little turbines that are in front of it. It only goes the direction that it is facing. So now we're going forward. It says, oh, we're above 70. I'll turn the lights on. As soon as we go down, it no longer works. And I'll do the same thing I did before where we invert it. We just turn this one here. Go to invert. Uh, it doesn't actually say, sorry. This is essentially invert, but I just say, you know, it says trigger below. Uh, basically, so now it'll trigger until it's 70 miles uh, kilometers per hour. Let's go back in here. As you can see, the lights are on. And now once we get up to 70, the lights turn off. All right. We're below 70, lights on. Above, lights off. That is that is all there is to this speedometer block. Like I said, it has to be pointing in the direction you want to tell the, uh, the speed of. That is the only caveat to this uh, block that I can really think of right now. All right, next one. Distance sensor. Let's see how the distance sensor work. Uh, let's get rid of this one here real quick. Distance sensor I have set up on this one right here. Let's go ahead and build it here. Here we go. This one is it's very simple. This this uh hold on actually probably should probably show it to you here. This is the distance sensor right here. Wherever this black face is facing is where it's gonna try to shoot out and see how far away things are. So let's go into its options here real quick. It has a distance. You can say how far away it wants it to trigger. You know, one meter is like right up in its face. Zero, you probably won't trigger at all. And, uh, you know, you can have it trigger all the way up to 50 meters away. How exactly far that is, I don't know. We could probably do some tests, but I don't think it's needed. This one also has an invert, so you can have it kind of work uh, the way it was before. So right now, if I have it inverted, it'll, you know, stay triggered until it sees something. But without it being inverted, it won't trigger until it sees something. And like I said, this distance here says how far away it'll look for stuff. So let's put it back to one, which is what I have it set for here. Go into to, uh, play mode here. And now when I move the thing, you see this black part here is the trigger. So I move this down. It's like, oh, I see the ground. There it is. It lights up and the lights turn on. It moves away. No longer in view. Nothing is no longer uh, close to it. Turns back off. That is all there is to it. I'll do the invert real quick just so you guys have that, you know, ingrained how exactly these things work. I'm trying to be as thorough as, as I can for you all so you guys can understand this without any issues. So right now, it's sending a it's sending the signal because nothing is triggering it. Now something is triggering it, so it's no longer sending the signal. That's how it works when you invert it. That's all there is to it. All right, let's move on to the next one. Now we're getting to, into more interesting things. So now we're out of the sensor blocks. We know how all the sensor blocks work now. Now we're going to have to start getting into these logic blocks, which a lot of people don't, you know, haven't had much experience with. They don't quite understand how they work. And that is why I am here to help you guys out. So the first one here, let's see what we're doing here. Let me, we, uh, let me see which block this is. Hold on. I think this is an end block. Can I, can I click you, please? There we go. Um... Uh, well, I, I'm, I'm, yeah, there we go. It's an logic gate. So I'll uh, double check here. We'll click on it. You see the uh, things here. Um, you know, basically, what do I want it to control? If you click this, it'll show you what it's controlling. Right now, it's just going to be controlling the lights. But with logic block, that's how it works. You just say, okay, I want you to control this if the uh, you know input is true. And with the blocks themselves, you have to tell them where they're sending their inputs. 
So this is a uh, angle sensor, and it's going to be sending its input into the AND block right here. The same thing with this distance sensor right here. It's going to be sending its input there too. And the uh, the logic block is what's going to be sending the signal to the end uh, the end item, which is, is in this case is these lights, but it could be your engine. It could be you know telling your car to steer. I mean, it could be anything you want. You could be you can set up like an automatic cannon, whatever you want. It's basically the sky's the limit as long as you understand what the basics here do. So let's get into this. I'll show you exactly how the logic block works here. Now with the AND block, it takes in two inputs. That's how it works. It only activates if both inputs are true. That is how AND blocks work. So it gets in two inputs. If the, if the first one's true, the second one's true, it'll, it'll send it up a true signal. Otherwise, it will not work. Let's go over this real quick. I have to remember how I set these things up, and the camera's not being helpful to me here. So uh, I think the first one, the distance block on top, I'm going to drop it down, and that's going to cause this this sensor is going to be sending out a true signal now. It's 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 being triggered. It's giving the uh, logic block here input saying, "Hey, I'm activated." You can tell that by that green arrow on the logic block. Look at it on the bottom left. See when it drops the green arrow? Yeah, it fills in. It was white. Now it's green. So okay, one of the conditions are true, but it's still not activating these lights. Not until we do this. Now, now both of them are active. You can see the, both those arrows on that logic gate are green now because the angle sensor is giving it the OK signal. The distance sensor is giving it the OK signal. And the, uh, the logic gate is saying, OK, lights, both, both conditions are met. Let's go ahead and uh, put those lights on. And as soon as one of these stops being met, when I let go of this, the lights get turned off. The second, you know, second both conditions are no longer met. Or if this, if this condition is met, and I put the thing back up, it's no longer true because, uh, you know, not both conditions are true anymore. That is all there is to that. That is the end block. It's one of the easier ones to understand. Basically, all conditions have to be tr true for the end block condition to be satisfied. All right. And the uh, next one, I think we're going to do the or block. Let's get out of here real quick. Get rid of you. Let's see where it's my next one here. Uh, oh, you know, I'll find out real quick which one this one is. Just by looking at it here. Which one are you? Can I can I click you? All right, which one are you? Yep, this is the OR gate. Okay, that's exactly what I was looking for. Let's get this built. Oh no, we flip all right, we flipped it over. Can you stop flipping, please? Please? I'm trying to do a video. Oh my god, my guy my guy keeps flipping it. <laughs> Let me get inside and then when I put it back up, it'll stay still. There we go. Alright, the OR gate is uh, very much different than the AND gate. Or gate only cares if one of the conditions are, are, are true. Only one of it, as long as any of them are true, it'll say, okay, I'm going to activate. So you see right now, if I move this angleometer into the, uh, into the blue area, it'll light up. It doesn't care that the other sensor isn't being triggered because it only cares as long as one of the conditions are met. So now I can bring the other one down, which activates the distance sensor, and then it turns on as well. Why? Because it doesn't care. As long as one of the conditions are true, it'll activate. That is how the OR gates work. All right, that was pretty simple. The next one is the only one people might find, I think, a little bit confusing, and we'll go over that real quick. I'll try to be thorough for you guys so you understand how exactly this works. The last one here should be the ZOR gate, or the XOR gate. Let me just double check to make sure I'm, I'm picking the right gates here. Yep, it is the XOR gate. And uh, let's go ahead and get this built. You hop into it. There we go. The XOR gate is kind of like the IF gate and the anti-AND gate. Basically, it'll only trigger if only one of the conditions are true. So basically, for it to trigger, one of the conditions has to be true. And they cannot both be true. In other words, if I do this and I drop the distance sensor down so it's triggered, it's happy. Now, if I move the thing to the side so the arrow goes into the blue space on the angle sensor, it turns off. Because now both conditions are true. The XOR gate does not want that to happen. It says, hey, if you're both being true, something's not right here. I'm going to shut things off. That's all there is to it. Once one condition is no longer being met, it turns it back on. So basically, one of the conditions has to be true and only one of the conditions for the XOR gate to be happy. That is how that works. I tried to make this, you know, is a, 
bulletproof as possible, as clear as possible. You guys hopefully can see what exactly is happening. And as you can see, only one of the conditions is true. That it, you know, it uh, meets the parameters. The second none of them are true, it turns off. That is how the XOR gate works. I hope this has been you know helpful to you guys. If there's something you don't understand, leave me a comment down below. I tried to be as clear as possible, but you know sometimes I know I might have missed something. Maybe there's something just for some reason doesn't quite get to you. And hopefully I'll be able to help you out if you leave me a comment down below. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. This game is Trailmakers. If you guys are interested, I have a link down in the description. You guys are new to this channel. Uh, this you know I don't actually do guides very often. I tend to play do let's plays, but I play let's plays of uh, you know vehicle engineering games like Trailmakers, Besiege, stuff like that. I also play base building games and uh, tower defense games, also my thing like industry. So if that's your thing, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button, click that bell icon, leave a comment down below, and uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.